In the last lesson, we learned about the complex sentence in the independent clause followed by dependent clause format. Well, in order to help vary sentence structure and make the flow of your writing to be very, very powerful and great, we can actually change the independent clause and the dependent clause and switch them around so that an independent clause followed by a dependent clause can now be dependent clause followed by independent clause. The only difference is that the punctuation is needed between the dependent clause and the independent clause. So you need to remember that because the way the sentence is structured, it does not make sense without the comma because the comma adds sort of a pause to the flow of how the sentence is read. So independent clause followed by dependent clause is the one we learned in the last lesson. And independent clause followed by dependent clause does not need any punctuation. But when we write the dependent clause first followed by independent clause, we need a comma. Now remember, the goal is to help you learn these kinds of sentence structures so that it will help you to write effectively. It's all about effective communication. We do not want to write all in dependent clause followed by independent clause sentences. We want to have simple sentences, this type of complex sentence, this type of complex sentence, compound sentences that you learned about a few lessons ago. So I want to show you the sentences from that last lesson and how they would appear in the dependent clause uh, followed by independent clause format. So this case would mean this would come first and the sentence would read, when I fell down, comma, I cut my knee. This sentence here would say, if she can find a ride, comma, Mary will attend the meeting. So you can see and hear and know that the sentence makes sense either way. It does not matter. But if we write a sentence with the dependent clause first, we need to place a comma after the dependent clause. When I fell down, there it is here. Now I'll put the independent clause. I cut my knee. So you can see that this sentence is the same as this sentence. It's just the independent and dependent clauses are switched. But in this format, we need a comma. So that is important for us to know because we love having different types of sentence structures in our compositions. And so we're practicing this now in isolation because when we get to the composition section, we want to have all these tools in our toolbox so that we can revise our sentence structure so that our uh, compositions communicate effectively. So now let's talk about um, how, basically how to combine sentences into two different part, uh, excuse me, two sentences into a, a um, complex sentence using either format, independent versus dependent or dependent and independent. So how do we combine sentences using an independent or dependent clause from, for the complex sentence? Let's look at the example that I have on the board. The lion tamer left the ring. He had been injured. He would not return. Those are all simple sentences, but the last part of the sentences, the last two, can be combined into a complex sentence. So I'm going to use the subordinator because, and I will start with this sentence and say, he would not return because he had been injured. And now we have combined this sentence and this sentence uh, in the format of a complex sentence, independent clause followed by dependent clause. He would not return because he had been injured. So we have a complex sentence. Now that makes a lot more sense than the other one. Could I switch it around? Could I say the dependent clause first followed by the independent clause? Well, let's read it. 
First, I will read this sentence, then the way we have it now. Then I will read it with the other kind of complex sentence. The lion tamer left the ring. He would not return because he had been injured. The lion tamer left the ring. Because he had been injured, he would not return. Both, sentence, both types of complex sentences would work. It sounds great. I like both of them. So you get to decide, and that's the activities that you'll be doing a little bit later, is deciding, how do I combine this? Don't forget, the subordinator is the key in combining the two sentences. I have used because to, um, to do that combination. So even though, after, if, when, because, although, th those are all subordinators and they are what you, the, they are all, all the subordinators are what you will use when you are making that connection and combining those simple sentences into a complex sentence. So with that, let's practice that and you're going to be quite ready when it comes time for composition. In this lesson, we are going to revise and we're going to revise everything. So I am going to show you the revisions that I have made because one of the things that you want to make for sure that you do, and I realize that I did not do this and the revision is the great time to do it, is to expand the climax. So the point in the story, whenever it feels like, oh, what's going to happen? That is the time that you want to expand the writing. And I'll show you how I did that. So I'm just going to walk you through every single revision so that you can see what kind of changes I have made. So if you can see, on a dark summer night, I visited my grandparents Take out the apostrophe. I don't need to say I visited their house. I just visited my grandparents <laughs> down the road. While we, now I had, had not put an antecedent uh, to my pronoun we. Who's we? Because I said I. Hmm. So while we were there, so I'm going to change this um, and make sure that the, um, uh, th that it reads like this. While we were there, my brother, j while I was there, look, I didn't even change it. So, while I was there, my brother joined me, and my grandpa told a story about our neighbors who were attacked by wild dogs. So, I changed this some, instead of some neighbors, I changed it to our neighbors. And then I added the word, dogs tore them up, they did. He warned. I replaced the word said with warned. Wow, one word can make such a big difference, he warned. I looked at my brother with dread. Now, dread is like when you have to do chores. So I didn't really think dread was the appropriate word, so I said I looked at my brother with terror in my eyes. I was getting scared. Soon, the time came to head home. We walked out the door and into the dark, dark night. Now, I forgot to tell you whenever I taught you the lesson on drafting I put this word or this sentence in green because it is just uh, a good sentence to provide vivid language the moon peaked which is personification from behind the clouds and a breeze blew gently so I tried to set the stage I didn't say the moon was shining and the wind was blowing I put it into this personified uh, form the moon peaked from behind the clouds and a breeze blew gently so there's some vivid language can't you just feel it and see it oh. and then i wrote i hopped on my bike instead of the bike and my brother trotted beside me instead of was as we headed home now one thing i changed here i added the word so i was so scared and then I took all the stuff um, uh, out, out of here because I said, remember when I added as we headed home earlier, I changed that and put it here at this beginning, uh, at the beginning of this sentence. As we headed home, I was so scared. Then all of this I took out and changed it to behind every bush, a large wild dog waited to eat me for dinner. Instead of just saying, um, I could hear something behind every bush. You see how much better that is? And then, suddenly, without warning, a vicious, human-like wild dog tore from the side of the road and growled a death sentence. So that sentence before just said, 
Suddenly something jumped from the side of the road and growled. Isn't that much better? Yes, it is. And then I extended the climax. So I started and, ro ro and wrote up the side of the, the board here. Before I knew it, my brother sprinted past me screaming <clears throat> to the top of his lungs. I pedaled, but my feet were blocks of stone. As I turned and entered the driveway, a shriek of laughter nipped at my heels. So here's another transition as I turned and entered the driveway. And then instead of just saying my brother started laughing, I said a shriek of laughter nipped at my heels. More personification. And then I can end it. It was then I realized that my brother hid by the road and scared us. So that is what revision looks like. And that's what I want you to do right now. Expand the climax. Think about adding personification. Look at my model. Think about all the things that I did and use that to guide you as you make your revisions.